Hello everybody, my name is Walter and today I'm going to show you how you can build my expandable and flat rotating billboard or two-sided, two-dimensional expandable gapless feed tape. So um, if you're looking for the corresponding showcase or world download, you can find those linked in the description. But let's get started. So this is a modular design, so the total size depends on how many modules you want to build. There are two numbers that are important here. First, how many center modules you have top, center, and bottom modules. How many center modules you have stacked on top of each other. This is the number n. This becomes important rather quickly when we're talking about resources. And how many modules you have next to each other. This is the number k. Again, quite important for the resources, besides of the total size, obviously. So with that said, let's talk about the total size. Uh, for that, I'm not counting the clock here, uh, since this is not a necessary part for this whole system to work properly. Uh, clock is only necessary when you want this to continuously cycle around. You can also trigger this, for example, with a button or something like that. So, but let's talk about the size. So the total depth of the design is five blocks, unless you count the blocks that are temporarily being pushed out to the front and the back here, then it would be seven blocks. The total width of the design is the number of modules next to each other, so k times four plus three for the control circuitry. And the height is the number of center modules so n times 4 plus 24. The size of the screen itself I will come to in detail a bit later in this tutorial. And with that, let's get to the resources. So I've split this into what you need only once, what you need for the central modules, what you need for the top and the bottom, and what you need for the sides. So let's start with what you need once. You need building blocks. I left it out for the rest, but those obviously also need building blocks. Then two slabs, six obsidian blocks, 18 slime blocks, two redstone blocks, then 22 redstone dust, 19 redstone torches, seven repeaters, 15 observers, four sticky pistons, and then if you want, a clock, or what you need for the clock. The actual setup of the clock varies on how many modules you stack, uh, since the fastest cycle time actually increases, or the whole thing becomes a bit slower the more modules you stack. Just a little side note here. I will explain this in more detail when we come to this part in the tutorial. Now for the center modules, so times n times k, you're gonna need seven obsidian blocks, eight slime blocks, two redstone dust, four repeaters, and four sticky pistons. So they are not that expensive, actually. Then for the top and the bottom, so k times, you're gonna need eight obsidian blocks, 22 slime blocks, a single slab, 10 redstone dust, 16 repeaters, eight normal pistons, and 12 sticky pistons. And then finally for the sides, you're gonna need two uh, obsidian blocks, a slab, five redstone dust, nine redstone torches, and four observers. And with that, it's finally time to show you how to build this contraption here. So before you can actually start building the circuitry, you should figure out how big you want the screen to be. For that, we need to have a look at the modules that form the screen. So what you can see here is marked out the edges of the various modules that are later on forming the rotating screen. So here we have the lower edge, which is the sexagon line, and there the upper edge of the actual screen. Remember, the circuitry goes a bit further, two to three blocks further up and two to three blocks further down. So, but let's talk about the modules. So we have three types of modules. We have bottom modules, we have top modules, and then in between we have a variable number of center modules. Every module is four blocks wide with the possible exception of the last module. So the first module is on the side where the control circuit will be, marked by this single line of diamond blocks. 
And the last module, marked by the two diamond blocks, is opposite of that. And here you can actually leave out the last two slices and make this just a two byte module. So you can have basically any even width for this design. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the height. So let's start with the bottom modules. We start at the lowest point of the bottom module and counting this block, you have nine blocks for the bottom module. So from here to here, you have nine blocks. From here to here, subsequently, just eight blocks. On top of that, the center modules are a total four blocks high, so they make a nice four by four pattern. And as you can see, I'm going with three of those stacked on top of each other here. And after that, you have the top modules. And they start from here up to, again, the lowest block, again, nine blocks. Or if you go from down there to the top block, 10 blocks. So that's the total size. Now, lastly, let's talk about the screen at the back. So the screen at the front will move downwards. And the screen at the back will move upwards. And basically, the pattern at the back is exactly the same. You can see zigzagging is the same, just one block further down. And in between, you have a three wide gap. And with that laid out, it's time to actually start with the circuitry. So let's get started with the bottom modules. I will do this step by step. And during the cuts, I will also start copying from this first module here to the following modules, so you can see the patterns emerging a bit better. Anyway, we start with this first four wide module here. This should be the side with the control circuitry. And the first slice of blocks here should be one with a raised block. These here are, as I said, the edge of the moving screen. Right below should be blocks that are not being moved in a big circle, although they will be moved forwards and backwards a bit. Anyway, let's get started. So we start here on the outer edge and go first three blocks down and place block there. Add two blocks to the back, then one down and one up. Then to the left or away from the control circuitry, or where it will be in the future, we need two lower blocks. And now we need the same pattern another time. So very simple pattern. Now we grab repeaters, place one tick repeaters in those gaps here. Then wire in those gaps, make sure they are in the cross shape. Now grab normal pistons, place them on top of those blocks and one block diagonally down, as you can see here. So basically one wide gap to the repeaters. And if you were to do this with those blocks here, you would see that those are directly below the lower edge of the returning screen. Now towards the front, on the middle of those three blocks, place sticky pistons placing forward with slime blocks to the face. And then all that's left is just placing blocks around. And that's all that the lowest layer of the bottom modules and done. And once you've copied this a few more times, it should look like this here. By the way, I decided to change my markers here to emerald blocks since this was getting a bit more confusing with all of the iron blocks around. Anyway, let's continue. So now, again, we need to go to the modules we want to actually build. And here we start with the block diagonally behind in the piston. From here, we need to go three blocks up, like so, add two blocks to the left, and then a raised block. Then put down a repeat on one tick here and here, and some redstone wire in the middle. Then a piston here, another sticky piston there, two slime blocks there and here. Now we build the same, just four blocks higher. And 
then once you have placed those few blocks here, then the sticky pistons, and then finally the slime blocks, you should see when those pistons here extend, they will be in line with the top of the bottom module. Now it's time for the center modules. For that we go to the lower edge of the module and then basically two behind the future screen. So at the very middle, we start with an obsidian block on the right side here. Or if you are right above the lower modules, you just need to go three blocks up from the repeater there. That's really where we need to start with an obsidian block, then another one to the left, followed by a normal block, and then an erased obsidian block. Now we do the same as down there, so two repeaters bracketing some wire. And then we build exactly the same on top, with the exception of this being an obsidian block, not a normal block. Now for the pistons. On the front, we need pistons facing upwards. Here, with a slide block on top, like so. So essentially just repeating or continuing on the pattern from the lower module. At the back, we basically do the same, just in that now we are starting at the top and going downwards. And again, we have slime blocks, as you can see here. So that's also looking good. And this is already all you need to do for all of these center modules here. After you're done with the center modules, it's time for the top modules. For that, we start by going first three blocks up from the rightmost repeater here. And that's where we need a normal block. Then towards the left, another normal block, followed by an obsidian block, and then a raised normal block. And let's actually rotate those around. So now, again, by in the middle, one tick repeater here and here. And since we're at the top, we need to go down with sticky pistons here and there, and then our four slime blocks below. Now the exact same thing once more. And as you can see, we should be right below the upper edge of the top modules already, which means that once you have copied this pattern over to the other modules, you're almost done with the top. For this last part, we need to go to this piston here, then three up where we need a sticky piston going towards the back. It should be in line with the gap or the end of the moving screen at the front. Then two blocks over another sticky piston, put slime blocks in front of them, and then blocks around those slime blocks, as you can see here. Then on top of the sticky pistons, we need a four wide line of blocks, wire on top of essentially the pistons, and then one tick repeaters, as you should be accustomed to right by now. Then two blocks to the front, so just behind the screen more or less. We need two blocks here, again with repeaters on one tick. They run into raised blocks with a lowered block with redstone cross inside. The same here. And let's go and add a block in front of the redstone cross. And now we need normal pistons facing downwards right on top of the edge of the moving screen. And that's already the module done. So now we just need to copy this a few more times. And with that, the modules are pretty much done. We will fill in the screen later on because um, we first need the control circuitry or this thing here will not work properly. So for that, we start at the very bottom again with this somewhat line of redstone crosses. And here we need first an observer looking at it from the side. Then a repeat on three ticks, right there, running into a full block. Full block in front of this observer there. 
then a lower block to the front and to the right, on the right redstone dot, on the front a repeater towards the front, running into a full block, with a lower block to the left, and that's where we need a 3 tick repeater running into this block there. Then place a torch on top of this one here, another block with a torch on top there, and again a block on top. Then here, first a block to the front and on top of the redstone cross, then a 2 tick repeater there, running into this raised block, raised block behind it, and then an observer running into it from the top. This will be the trigger point for this half of the circuitry. This will become important later on, since we will also have a trigger point at the top, and both need to be triggered at the same time. Anyway, let's continue on. So now we start with a somewhat simple torch tower. For that, first a torch to the side, and you can see this is diagonal to this line of blocks here. So let's just place a block there and some wire there, and you should already see this line of pistons here extending. Now, since we are next to slime blocks, we need an obsidian block, then a torch to the side, and now we have basically a torch tower going sideways, as you can see here, and you can see every fourth block needs to be an obsidian block, and diagonal to that we have the point where we take an output here. And we continue on with this pattern here, so until we are running out of pistons at the front of the build, not the back, but the front of the build. So let me very quickly do this a few more times, and don't forget, when you have an obsidian block, you also need the back this block here with the wire, since those power the pistons at the front. So just a few more times. And we are once more at the point where we need this here, and then we're getting close to the last module in the middle here. There you can see from here on we only have pistons at the back but no longer at the front and that means we need to place this time the torch on top of this obsidian block here, not on the side. Follow this up with a block on top of the torch, and then a sticky piston followed by six slime blocks, then another three on the right of that, followed by one redstone block. Now we need to modify this first module a bit. So uh, we start by removing the repeater and the block. Then we need an observer looking at this redstone cross there, repeater on three ticks on top, and running into an obsidian block. One tick repeater on top of that one, then a lower block behind it with a three tick repeater taking an output, running into a full block with redstone dust on top. Now we go a bit lower and place a block essentially directly to the repeater there. So when we place a torch here, it will power this line of pistons here, which is the top line of sticky pistons on the back side there. Wire on top. Then we will need an upside down slab here with a two tick repeater running into the wire. Full block behind it, and then an upside down slab on top. Put down two wire like so. Then we will need a observer running into this block here. This observer is the trigger point for this top or this back half, similarly to this observer down here which triggers the opposite half. But more about this a bit later. Now we need to go to the center modules and here let's start at the second module from the bottom. Since uh, we need to actually modify them going up from here. So just replace this block and the corresponding blocks in all of the modules above with an upside down slab. As I said, this is just for the center modules and here only starting with the 
second module from the bottom. Good. Now, let's actually start with a bit more circuitry. And for that, we start here at the bottom center module. At this line of pistons, which should be the first piston at the back if you go from the bottom. And here we need a block again diagonally to the repeater. So when we place a torch here, it will power the line of pistons. Place another torch to the side and then diagonally down another block with Ritzen dust and the torch here. Then we need to go one block further down and that's where we need the sticky piston placing downwards. And below that, a column of slime blocks until you have a too high gap and then a redstone block. So when the piston extends, it will essentially power this repeater here. Now we need to go up until we reach the point at the top there. So for that, we will need to get a bit creative. So first of all, wire on top of this block and we need to cut off the wire here with an obsidian block since there are slime blocks moving next to it. Then block on top of this wire, torch here, which should connect to this wire on top. Then torch here, wire on top, and you will see those pistons here getting triggered over and over, but doesn't really matter much since we haven't filled in the rest of the, or the actual moving screen yet. So don't worry about this. Then cut off the wire here with a full block. Now block on top, torch and block, block on top of here, and you can see the emerging pattern. Make sure to cut off here the wire again with an obsidian block. And you will also need a torch at the back here, so you actually power those pistons here. And this pattern needs to repeat it a few more times, so as you can see, it's a pretty simple pattern but it's also pretty simple to forget an obsidian block somewhere or something like that. So then block on top, wire here, torch there and there. And you can see the pattern just repeats itself a few more times until we are at the point where we don't really have enough space left. Make the final connection which you will see in just a few moments. And here you can see there is not enough space left for the final connection. So here we just go not in and not towards the right, but towards the front diagonally. So we connect to this torch here with some wire and the torch there. And obviously I forgot one rather important torch right there. And with that, all of the pistons should extend. Yep, that's looking good. Now we need to connect this and this observer down there with one signal line so that when we trigger the signal line, both get triggered at the same time. So for that, let's start at the bottom here at the last block at the back there with a block and then below that uh, observe a redstone wire on top and a block below. And now we repeat this pattern here a few more times. Until we reach this point down here where we can only fit in a block with redstone wire and the torch, uh, sorry, the observer to the side this time. And don't worry about doors extending, uh, doesn't really matter much. And now we have added a delay of four ticks to this line here. This is important to keep in mind. Here we do more or less the same. We start at the front this time with the last one there, with an observer going upwards, running into a block with redstone on top. Then we repeat this pattern few more times. 
until we are next to the slime blocks there, where we need an obsidian block instead and some redstone dust there. Again, we have added four ticks of delay. Now um, it gets a bit more tricky to fit everything in, so let's simply add a line of observers going up here. So we have added four delay here. This is one too much, I believe. And so now we have three here, three there. So they are producing the same delay at the top and the bottom. If you have more center modules, you would have to add two repeat uh, observers here and two observers there. If you have less, you can squeeze the entire thing a bit down, but uh, should be too difficult. And now just a last observer to the side here. And this is our trigger point. So when we trigger this, you should see both sides basically moving in opposite directions and um, with basically the same timing involved. Yeah, so that's looking good. And last part now, before we start filling in the cycling uh, materials, is a clock, which triggers the entire thing. And the clock has a certain limitation, which depends on how many modules you have stacked on top of each other, or how many center modules you have stacked. In my case, this is three. You take this number, double it, so for this would be six, and then add 24, so I get 30. So I can trigger this every 30 redstone ticks, or every three seconds. And now let me quickly add a clock for that. And here we go. So turns out the formula I wrote down way back when I designed this was actually wrong. It's not plus 24, it's plus 32. So for three modules, this would give one activation every 3.8 seconds or 38 redstone ticks. So how did I do this? Basically, I have a repeater torch clock here with a single cycle or loop time of 19 ticks. So every full loop is the 38 ticks and uh, only every full loop this piston here will retract once which will also only trigger the repeat, uh, observer here once and uh, subsequently the entire thing. So um, the nice thing with this setup is that you can easily stop it without having to time it properly, um, which can be a bit fiddly with other types of setups. So now, as you can see, I also fit in the first two loops of blocks and they are working quite nicely, as you can see here. What you can also see is a slightly different behavior whether you have blocks in the loop or not. And um, you can see those go out and in again, and only those here get out and stay out before they get retracted later on. And that has to do with uh, basically there at some point being too many blocks to move around and only once they are moved partially out of the way, the retraction can be done. This is also the reason why, unfortunately, you can't make the first module just one block smaller. Uh, so this is unfortunately why you are limited to even width for this door here. But having said that, it's now finally time to fill in the system here with full loops. When doing so, make sure you don't forget the blocks that actually are in between the two screens here at the bottom and here at the top. And while I was filling in a blank screen, uh, I noticed that I totally forgot to add at the very top here a piston there with a slime block in front of it, uh, or otherwise this first module here will not work properly. Uh, you can place normal blocks around and down here this is also one thing where you need actually an obsidian block or the first module will not work properly 
Now, as you can see, I have a blank screen in there, so you can give this another test run and make sure that everything works. Um, if something goes wrong during this part here, you will likely end up with those slime blocks behind the screen fusing into one full line or alternatively just retracting but no longer extending. If that happens, manually remove the slime blocks and replace them in the proper position again. There is uh, unfortunately no way for the system here to um, resolve that issue itself. Uh, you will have to do this manually. And obviously once more, uh, if you want to build a wall here, don't forget to add some obsidian blocks here where the slime blocks get involved, just as a little reminder there. But with that out of the way, uh, let's add a few messages and maybe add a bit more of a wall there. And voila, so now you can see I've finished this up. I also added a bit of a wall. And as you can see, there is one rather nice effect due to the lines being shifted if you move over by one block. Um, and that is that you can actually make patterns that flip over if you go to the other side. So as you can see, those are more or less arrows, up, down, up. And usually if you flip it over, you would expect it to go the opposite direction. But again, you have up down and up. So uh, just a little gimmick this kind of setup can be used for if you are clever about this. And with that we have reached the end of this tutorial for my expandable and flat rotating billboard. I hope you enjoyed it and well, see ya!